So song says, Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parent. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without knowledge of your parenting and your loving care. Now I am your child, I am adopted in your family. I can never be alone. Father God, you're there beside me. I will. Sing your praises, I will Sing your praises, I will Sing your praises forevermore I will Sing your praises, I will Sing your praises, I will Sing your praises forevermore Father God, I wonder how I Managed to exist without knowledge of your parenthood, your loving care. Now I am your child, I am adopted in your family. Never be alone, Father God, you're there beside me. I will sing your praises, I will. Sing your praises, I sing your praises forevermore. I sing your praises, I sing your praises, I sing your praises forevermore, forevermore. Jesus says that even when he was ascending to heaven, he, he said that he would not leave us alone. He said, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will send the helper to be with you and to guide you into all truth. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. And he is with us even today. So that's why we, 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 we are not alone. You know, we are never alone if you are a child of God. And if God is our Father, the Holy Spirit lives in our hearts. And Jesus is right now interceding for us in heaven. So that means we have the Father with us, the Son with us, and the Holy Spirit is also with us. So uh, a Christian is a person who is blessed. The power of God resides in us. So every day we must exercise that power. You know? The power of God will be alive in us. We should use that power to live as a child of God. Okay, let's sing one more song. It says, more love, more power, more of you in my life. More of you in my life. More 
and loving father we thank you o lord for sending the holy spirit to us because of him we always have power because of him we are always children of the almighty god we are sealed in the holy spirit we are reserved we are booked for that day when jesus calls us we will join you in heaven what a privilege it is to know christ and to live with him what a privilege it is to live in the holy spirit daily we pray that this evening the holy spirit will guide us unto all truth through the word of god that you speak to us cleanse us afresh o master help us to live as children of the light in jesus name we pray amen bibles and turn your bibles to the god, the book of acts We are in Acts chapter 8. No, sorry. Acts chapter 9. We finished Acts chapter 8 last week. We are in Acts chapter 9. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat box. The passage that we have to read and each person will read one one verse. Manu uncle? Oh yes. Can I start? One second. Huh? I'll just put the uh, passage in the chat box. Acts chapter nine, verses one to nineteen. No wait. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nineteen. Okay, so we're going to read Acts chapter nine, verses one to nineteen. All right, Joseph, you can start. But then Joel will be two, and then third will be. Oh, are these guys back? Let me ask them. Huh? Uh, Jacinta, Jasne, Jessica, are you back? They had a guest. Hi. Hello, Jacinta, Jasne, Jessica, are you there? Or is the guest still at the house? Most probably, the guest is still there because they're not able to unmute themselves. Right. So Nathaniel is also back. Joseph, you can start. Acts chapter nine. was one then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the lord went to the high priest joel was two wait joel is not reading pardon me uh, nathaniel what do you say what are you reading acts chapter 9 was 1 to 19 उंड Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jer- Jerusalem. Okay, verse three, David. As he, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Okay, Matthew Thomas, verse four. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, "Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me?" Okay, five. Athena. Uh, 
and he said who are do now and the lord said i am jesus who do persecute persecuting this yes. hard for thee to it is hard for thee to be against the pricks okay six um who's a matthew martin i now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do okay next is mark chapter 7 right no chapter 9 Huh? Chapter nine, okay. verse seven. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank, nor drank. Okay. Right. So we are back to Joseph. Verse ten. Now there was certain disciple at Damascus named Annas and to him the Lord said in vision Annas and he said here I am Lord Okay verse 11 uh, oh we didn't make Nathaniel read sorry Nathaniel uh, the Lord told him go to the house of Judas on straight street uh, and ask for a Uh, he got disconnected again okay joshua joshua 11 11 and the lord said unto him arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he prays 12 david in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Okay. 13. Matthew Thomas. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man. All the harm he has done to your holy prophet in Jerusalem. 14. Athena. And here he had authority from the chief priests to bring all the all that call on their name. Fifteen, Mark. But the Lord said to him, "Go for he and his chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before gen- gentiles, gentiles, okay. kings, and the children of Israel." Sixteen, Matthew Martin. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Sorry, sir. Audio issues. No, no problem. Seventeen. Ah, uh, we are back to Joseph. When you go verse seventeen, right? Correct. Seventeen. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid <laughs> his hands on him. He said, "Brother, sir, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, he has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit." Okay, verse eighteen, Joshua. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight and arose, and he was baptized. Nineteen, David. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. 
All right. Okay, thank you for reading. We go into the text, chapter 9. We saw last week that uh, church was uh, being persecuted. Persecution means they were being injured, they were being hurt, they were being attacked by the Jewish religious crowd. Okay, So the religious people who are from the Jewish background, they started persecuting the Christians. They started hurting the Christians, attacking the Christians. So the Christians had to leave their homes and run away from Israel, run away from Jerusalem. So wherever they went, they started sharing about the gospel. And so some of them had reached, uh, you know, uh, Samaria. Some of them had gone to Judea. And now there is a group of people in Damascus. Okay, there is a group of people in Damascus. Damascus is 130 miles northeast of Jerusalem. Okay, if you have a map of Israel during the time of Jesus at the back of your Bible, you will find this place called Damascus, almost 130 miles on the northeast side of Jerusalem. Okay, so it is a uh, you know it's not an order, it's not an easy journey. It's uh, it take those days. It takes six days to travel that much distance. Okay, six days to travel 130 miles. So it's a very very tedious journey, and me, uh, people actually go in chariots or uh, on the back of donkeys. Usually, but uh, here, this these people were going on horses. Okay, uh, uh, Paul was going on a horse. So, uh, why, why is he going there? The point why why he is going there is because there are a group of believers there, Christians there, and he wants to bring them back to Jerusalem so that they would be punished. Some of them should be killed if they keep on teaching and preaching that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God then these people are teaching something opposite to what the Judaism teaches. Okay? Because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, is Jesus the Messiah? Yes, he is the Messiah. But the Jews don't believe in that. And because of that, they think that Christianity is a cult group. It is a wrong, it's a, it's a religious system with a false set of beliefs. Okay? So that's what we call a cult. A cult is a religious group which has wrong teachings. So they thought that the Christian uh, you know, uh, people are having a wrong teaching. They are not teaching the right uh, things about God. So they must be punished. So Saul was leading this campaign. Saul was the man who was leading this attack against the Christians. So he was willing to travel six days on horseback just to get these people from Damascus and bring them to Jerusalem so that they would be punished. Now, that is the kind of person we would call a sincere person. You know, he is not joking when he says that he will go to Damascus and bring them. He's not. He's committed to that. What he believes. See, he believes with his full heart that Judaism is correct. He believes that uh, what God has said in the Old Testament is hundred percent right. So that is why he thinks that Jesus is not the Messiah. That also he believes 100%. So for what he believes, he is willing to do anything for destroying this group called Christians. Because he thinks they are atta they are actually teaching the wrong things. So we, would, we should kill them. We should not keep them alive. Because they will keep spreading this wrong teaching. So that's how devoted Saul was to the cause that he believed in. Okay? Even though the cause was wrong, he was fully 100% believing in that wrong cause. So, he was breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Okay? So, breathing means, you know, he's being pictured like a dragon, breathing fire. Okay? So, he was like breathing fire on the Christians. People heard the name Saul, they would be shivering because he's a notorious man. He's, he's not a gunda. You know, he's not like a, uh, he's not like a, what do you call it, uh, terrorist kind of thing. No. He's a person who believes in, in Judaism, but out of that belief, he is hating the Christians. Okay, So that's the kind of person Saul is. So he was breathing fire against the Christians because he personally, he thought that they were teaching something wrong. And asked him for letters to the synagogue. Now, he went to the high priest. The high priest at that time was Caiaphas. Okay? So, you know, recently, if you look at, um, there's this magazine uh, that we get, you know, online called Biblical Archaeology. Which means uh, there are a group of people who actually go and dig into the past. 
and they tried to find out historical facts and figures that are connected to the Bible. And recently they found out uh, in Jerusalem uh, the, the uh, a small stone on which the name of the high priest was engraved. Okay, so they cleaned up this, uh, you know, the stone, uh, uh, you know, this tablet, and they they got the names of what is written on it, and there it was written the name of the high priest was written there, and the name was Caiaphas. Okay, Caiaphas. So it's a recent discovery, and uh, it's a physical remain. You know, like uh, you get bones, you get ashes sometimes, and uh, it actually, you know, whose it is sometimes will be mentioned outside of it. Okay, it'll be in a cover. If you get bones or ashes, it will be in a cover and in that cover or in inside a pot. And on the pot outside, they will be writing whose it is. But here in um, in Jerusalem, they actually found uh, this stone uh, engraving, you know, which says that this man was ruling here and as the high priest during these particular years. And the years are very much in line with what we believe in the Bible. Okay. So during Jesus' uh, resurrection time, Jesus' death time, Caiaphas was the high priest in Jerusalem. So it is a recently confirmed. Archaeology is confirming. Science is confirming that the Bible is true. Uh, Archaeology is confirming. History is confirming that Bible is true. So, you know, facts, uh, historical facts, geographical facts are also confirming that the Bible is true. These are these are not mythological stories. These are historical, actual real happenings okay so this is not a set of stories it's actually real true story okay or true happenings yes George. Uh, during sundays when i go to sunday school then in my text like there is this once when a scientist was counting all the dates in the history he uh, that one day was missed and um, another christian scientist told that it was in the time of joshua when the uh, sun stood over where they were f fighting and the moon was stayed still and they missed one day okay so uh, that's in your sunday school text huh? Yeah, it's real. Okay, yeah. I mean, what happened in Joshua's time is real, right? The sun did stay up, uh, you know, for one day so that uh, Israel could actually defeat their enemies. It did happen in the book of Joshua, right? So, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, the date, whether it's changed or not. But yes, if you calculate it correctly, you will find that these, these things are historically, geographically and uh, scientifically accurate things that are there in the bible okay so uh, yeah what are the what are the what are the greatest uh, uh, things that we found in 1948 is actually an uh, you know they did not believe that there is a man called pontius pilate as the governor of that place till i think 1948 people who were skeptic about the bible they said pontius pilate is a completely made up name there is no record of any man like that in the roman historical, uh, you know, uh, uh, papers that they have, you know, the, the documents that they have found. So they said Pontius Pilate is a completely a person like, you know, totally imagined. It is not real. Bible is simply saying that there is a man called Pontius Pilate. But then in 1948, in a place called Syria, you know, far away from Jerusalem, they found out that there was a man called Pontius Pilate who was the governor of Syria. You know, he was actually transferred from Israel as a punishment because he could not control a group of rioters who claimed to have seen somebody risen from the dead. Okay, So what does it mean? It means that uh, who rose from the dead? Jesus rose from the dead. And the problem that came after Jesus' resurrection caused a lot of you know, imbalance or riots in Jerusalem. And that could be caused by the Jews because the Jews hated the Christians. So, because of he could not control the law and order in Jerusalem, he was transferred to Syria. The edict was found, a stone edict was found in Syria that this man was transferred as a punishment transfer. See? But it was found in 1948, proving that there really was a governor called Pontius Pilate. See? So, what Bible says is true and these facts come to light only later on, but we believe it's true by faith. But the world can, will not believe it unless it sees proof. So God is giving them proof also through archaeology, history, geography, science, all these ways. All right. So, 
let's um, let's continue and what happens he goes to the high priest and asks him for letters to the synagogues at damascus so that if he found anyone belonging to the way christians were called people who belong to the way okay now why do they call it the way now jesus claimed to be the way the truth and the life okay i am the way to the father so people who follow jesus follow the way the way that you know uh, jesus said so that's why they they are called people who follow the way now that's a different way because they don't believe that you know uh, you, if you follow jesus you will get to heaven jews don't believe that but here the people who believe that became christians so the christians believe that that if you follow jesus you will he will lead you to heaven so that's why they were called the people of the way and they said men or women he might bring them bound to jerusalem okay so they'll be arrested and they'll be dragged imagine six days they'll be dragged all the way from there from damascus to jerusalem he will be riding on the horse but these people will be walking on the road okay they don't have chapels they don't have anything they'll just keep walking on the hard road and they will be bruised their legs will get uh, you know injured but he'll drag them and bring them to jerusalem see so how cruel this man was saul and how cruel was the system at that time the chief priest was supporting him he was like the right hand of the chief priest so if you say today you know he'd be a political kind of person who is very powerful who is very influential and he has got contacts in the higher up in the government and all that's the kind of person Saul is okay so uh, now as he went on his uh, way he approached Damascus okay so he and his two of his friends they were coming towards Damascus as they were drawing close to Damascus what happened uh and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him okay now we don't know how many men were with with paul okay some of the pictures show that there were two other men but i believe there were more men because they they went on this mission to arrest the people right so the temple police are the people the soldiers who come with them not the roman soldiers okay so the temple police are the jews who are uh, standing guard at the temple in jerusalem they are well trained and they are like uh, soldiers only they have spears and all those things but they can't kill a person okay that's the only thing these soldiers the temple police cannot kill anybody they can arrest them and bring them to jail so paul was going with a group of people their main aim was to arrest uh, those people who are who are now claiming to be christians so when they reached damascus suddenly a, bl- a light from heaven shone around him wow that was supernatural suddenly light came down and it was shining around them and then uh, uh, what happened anangal yes um was the light uh, the light came when he was going right uh, yeah. was... yes he he was going towards damascus and the light was uh, shining uh, around him okay so it was like a bright light and it came suddenly imagine that you are driving a car and a bright light i mean of course the people who are coming against you opposite you will be putting the lights okay but imagine the light in your face like you can't see anything you know it's like a flash uh, you you're suddenly blinded for some time and because of the bright light your eyes are not able to adjust to the light you kind of go blind okay so that's what happened to paul uh, i mean saul and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground see so because of the light he lost his balance and he fell to the ground and immediately when he fell to the ground he heard a voice speaking to him what did the voice say he heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me okay that's the voice imagine that i'm i'm sure you know who the voice is right he said who are you lord and he said i am jesus whom you are persecuting okay so now there is a conversation happening between jesus and saul now jesus was according to saul's thinking jesus is dead right he is not risen from the grave he is dead these fellows christians are teaching something wrong by saying that jesus has risen from the dead <coughs> so now excuse me so now Saul is now confronting 
a risen Jesus, a Jesus who is alive. And this Jesus is speaking to him. And what is he saying? Why are you? He calls him by name, Saul, Saul. And then he says, why are you persecuting me? Why are you torturing me? Why are you attacking me, Saul? So, uh, now, always remember that Saul is not attacking Jesus, right? Saul is attacking the people who follow Jesus. People who follow Jesus, you and me, we are called the church, okay? We are the church. We, we are not the church. The building is not the church. We are the church. The people are the church. So, if Saul is attacking the church, Jesus is feeling the pain. That's why Jesus is saying, why are you attacking me? Okay. So, anyone in the church is attacked. Jesus experiences the pain of it. So, you can't get away with it you know, by hurting the church, by persecuting the church, by attacking the people of the church. Because if you attack the people of the church, then you know, we are part of Jesus' body. We are the body of Christ. So, when when you you know put a, a spear in one of the people, it's like you are hurting Jesus' hand. If you put uh, you know a, a spear on somebody's leg, then J Jesus' leg is hurting because we are part of His body. You see. So, since we are the church and the church is the body of Christ, anytime you attack the church, Jesus feels the pain. He experiences the pain. So he's asking, asking Saul this question. You're not attacking these people. You're attacking me, actually. You see? Why are you doing that, Saul? Why are you doing that? And so he, so Saul is flat on the ground, and he's conversing. He's uh, talking to this person called Jesus, whom he thought was dead, but he's now alive. So he's asking this question. You know, when he says this word "Lord," he's actually asking this question: Adonai, who are you, Lord? I know that you are supernatural. I know you are divine, but who are you? And then he says, "I am Jesus." So now he has to work out in his brain, oh, Jesus is God? He didn't believe that till now, but now he has to believe it. See, Suddenly, it felt like you know everything that he believed in now has to change. Why? Because what he thought was wrong is actually the truth. And what he thought was truth was actually a lie. You see, so far he was thinking that you can be a Pharisee, you can be a you know priest, you can be a Levite, you can be an Israelite, and you can easily get into heaven. But now he understood that, no, getting into heaven is only if Jesus allows you. Why? Because Jesus is God, you see. And he doesn't believe in Jesus. So now he's facing a crisis. So he says, uh, but I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. So God is giving him step-by-step -step instructions. He said, go into the city, wait over there. I will tell you what to do next. Saul, the men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Now, uh, Athena actually in her Bible read uh, that, you know, why are you kicking against the goats or against the pricks, right? That's a statement that is not there in some of our Bibles, but um, uh, you will find it. <coughs> in the footnote, okay, you'll find it in the footnote because that uh, it's not there in the later translations. Now, what does that mean? Why are you kicking against the pricks? Now, the pricks are sharp iron rods. You know, they're, they're very sharp iron rods that are used. You know, they look like this. Uh, you know, very sharp iron rods. Okay. Now, uh, when the cattle, when the cows, uh, I mean the bulls, you know, they don't move in the field, when they are plowing the field, when the farmers are plowing the field and the cows don't move, then they use these sharp iron pointy things to poke at their legs. Okay, To make them move, they'll poke them with these iron rods. And so, getting hurt, you know, the cows, the bull will move forward and they will plow the land. Okay, So, it, it hurts them when this iron rod pricks them. Okay. But now, what happens is some of the bulls, what they do is, you know, they are very adamant. They don't want to move forward. They don't want to plow the field. So what the bull will do is, the bull will kick back. When, it, when the farmer hurts the bull, the bull will kick back on the farmer. So what will happen is, this sharp iron rod will cut into the flesh of the bull. 
and hurt the bull severely it will hurt the bull its leg you know and will make it bleed so kicking against the pricks kicking against the goads these iron rods will hurt the bull more the farmer is not getting hurt the rod is not getting hurt but the bull is getting more and more injured so that's what jesus is saying you're like a bull you're not moving i am trying to poke you but you are kicking back against me so what will happen to you you will get injured sol if you are trying to persecute jesus you will get hurt you will get hurt severely because this iron rod will cut into your flesh and injure you just like how the bull gets hurt when it kicks against the iron rod same way you are trying to kick against me you will get hurt sol that's what jesus is trying to tell him okay so i am not going to get hurt but you are going to get hurt severely sol that's what is meaning okay and then sol rose from the ground although his eyes were opened he saw nothing so he was like blind now because something had happened to his eyes because of the bright light something had happened to his eyes so they led him by the hand and brought him into damascus and for 3 days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank so they brought him into the damascus maybe some house was there where he was given shelter and when he was sitting in that house he did not eat anything he did not drink anything he was maybe praying he was fasting and praying there asking god lord what should i do next am i going to be blind for the rest of my life his eyes were open but he could not see anything you know you have this wonderful wonderful you know eyeball which is called the retina and all those things the lens is there and you can see everything right Paul, Saul could see everything clearly till he reached Damascus, but he could not see with his when his eyes were you know able to see. He did not see who the real God is. But when he became blind, now he understood that Jesus is the true and living God. But he can't see anything now. So as a blind man, he stuck. Okay, imagine what would happen if you went blind. <laughs> you can close your eyes and check what will happen if you go blind. You know, things won't look the same. You have to touch and feel everything, and you will see. Oh, oh, this is this looks like my guitar. Okay, ah, uh-huh. and you open your eyes, and suddenly see. Oh, that's not a guitar. That's your microphone, and everything. You know, you have to touch and feel and see. Okay, is that the is that the thing? Is that the thing? And then finally, you get adjusted to yourself. Same way, this man. You know, now he thought that he has to live like a blind man all his life, and he's like waiting in that house for next instruction. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, "Ananias, here I am, Lord." And the Lord said to him, "Rise and go to the street called Straight, and the house of Judas. Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying." See, so Saul was praying there, and God uses another disciple, a prophet called Ananias. He says, "Ananias, you should get up and you should go to the house of this man called Judas." <coughs> not the other judas was carried this another judas judas is a very common name during those days okay it comes from the root word juda so judas uh, another person who lives in damascus that is in, his, in whose house saul is staying so ananias gets the instruction go and see this man called saul he is from originally from tarsus he is staying there i wanted to go and meet him you know immediately ananias gets scared why because ananias knows who saul is and what mission he has come there for right So Ananias answered, uh, "Oh, sorry, that he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight." Wow! So God said, "I've already shown him a vision." Okay, in that vision, vision is something like you know you see it when you are not uh, sleeping. Okay, when you're sleeping and you see something, uh, you you call it a dream. Okay, but when you are awake and you see something, it's more like a vision. Okay, so uh, it's not like a dream; it's it's really real. but you think as though you can see those it's like a moving animation thing you know you're seeing some some people moving in action and all those things so paul saw in his vision ananias a person coming in laying hands on him and he got his sight back that is a vision that god gave to saul so he says now if he has to get his sight back ananias you have to go and lay your hands on him and pray for him okay ananias suddenly got scared why because he knows who so lord i have heard from many about this man 
how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Wow. So Ananya says, I know all about this man. I'm not going there. Right? He has every excuse not to go there. So I'm, it's a dangerous guy. If I go and re- put, give him sight back, you know what he's going to do? He's going to put me itself. First person he'll put me in jail will be me. So I don't want to go there, Lord. I don't want to go near this guy. If, if he's blind, great. Let him be like that only. No? So we'll all be safe. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Oh, don't worry about it. We have to stop here because one time is up to my power supply is gone. Okay, so we'll pray and we'll close this evening. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Let's pray. Okay, so today we saw Saul, an enemy of Jesus, going out to arrest all those who believed in Jesus and bring them on a six-day journey back to Jerusalem. But his all, every plan was turned upside down because Jesus met him at Damascus. In a bright light, Jesus appeared to him and he spoke to him. He became blind, but he saw that Jesus is God. And now, in a blind stage, he's waiting in a house of a man called Judas, waiting for a man called Ananias, who's a disciple of Jesus, to come and pray for him so that he can get his eyes back. How God overturns our plans and he makes sure that a person, even who is an enemy of Christ, will become a follower of Christ. God can change our future plans in just a second. We thank you, O Master, that whenever and wherever the church is persecuted, wherever the church is hurt, you feel the pain and you defend us and you fight for us. We thank you and praise you. You're a God who protects us and you're a God who saves people. Even those who hate you, Jesus loves them and he saves them. We thank you, O Lord, for the change that you're going to bring about in the life of this man called Saul and how he's going to change the world upside down because of what he has seen, Jesus that he saw at Damascus. We thank you and praise you for the fun that we had, for all the things that we learned today. Pray that your name would be glorified in and through each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.